Hey all, can you guys see my face? If you can see my face, there's like a chat on the side if you want to type in a random number. Anyone? That'd be lovely. Cool. Perfect. All right. Uh, once again, I'm Joanna. I'm the Senior Product Manager at Guten. Today we'll be discussing what the hub is, how to create a new product, and um, depending on how things go, potentially we'll have a second webinar. This is our first webinar, so uh, please bear with us. Also, I am a super awkward person, so like embrace my awkwardness. Feel free to laugh behind the screen. Totally okay with that too. Um, I have Frank Jackson here with us. He is our content manager. Cheers, everyone. Potentially director one day of things. Keep dreaming. <laughs> Being big, right? <laughs> Thanks, Joanna. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Joanna is our hub guru, so uh, you're all in very good hands with her. Uh, we're very excited. Like she said, this is our first of uh, many webinars that we'll be having, uh, helping everyone learn more about the hub for product creation, store management, and uh, eventually other areas of using Google. So I'll be on the chat and monitoring, uh, monitoring Q and A's throughout. So uh, looking forward to your questions and feedback. And uh, Joanna, yeah, get back to you. <laughs> Cool, so at the bottom of your screen, there should be this little bar and it has like a QA. and a If you've got questions, feel free to type them in. Um, after each section, we'll probably be answering two to three questions. And any questions that don't get addressed right now, we'll be answering later on and sending out an email at uh, the beginning of next week with all of the answers to everyone, along with a recording of this webinar. Um, cool, all right. Let's... Uh, Get started. Do you guys see the hub right now? All right, perfect. I see things happening in the chat. So this is our hub. To give you a brief rundown as to like how what we think of hub and how we kind of came up with hub is um, it's a centralized location where you can create, store, manage, edit all of the products that you want to create through Google. Um, it's just like a centralized location where all of your products, regardless of the type of product or what store you're selling them in, live. We created three sections depending on the type of user you are. You have a storage and Shopify and an all section. So we're in Hub here, all storage, Shopify. If you're, uh, so storage is where you would save your products if you're interested in purchasing them at a later date. Um, if you order them through our simple order form, which can be reached through the place order over here or add order up here and then selecting um, the simple order form over here brings you to the same place. You'll be able to select from storage there. It's also a place where you can just like save products that you're interested in um, publishing at a later date. We're working on that right now. So that will be a thing right now or not right now it will be a thing in the future. Shopify is where you put your Shopify stores. Um, you can have between one and infinite number of Shopify stores connected to us. Um, all of your stores would be displayed underneath here. I have one store connected called Candy Corn and Things, created it during the holidays, uh, the Halloween season. So how I came up with that name. <laughs> uh, if you're interested in adding another store at any given moment, you just select this little plus button, click add store, it brings you to this page where you can just type in, uh, copy in your like dot my Shopify URL. Um, select submit, and it'll be added back into your Shopify tab over here. If you have products connected to your Shopify store, you would see the link product. This gives you a way to link any products within your store that's not currently connected to Guten and connect them to Guten. If you don't have any products in your store, you just won't see that button um, because you won't really have anything to link. The All tab has all of the products you've ever created, regardless of the store that it's in or if it's in storage. Um, it kind of just has everything within it. If it's saved to a specific store, it'll say the store and the number of SKUs that are connected to us. If it's saved to storage, it'll just have the uh, product name and storage. As you can tell I haven't been too, um, what's the word, creative with my product names. They're all just basically what the product is. If you have creative names, which I'm sure all of you do, unlike me, um, it, this would have your product name instead of like the product type. There's also a way where you can, we have two different ways where you can view your products. So this is our grid view, and then we also have a list view if you're interested in seeing more at once. 
Uh, it's just the same type of information laid out in a different way. Cool. Um, questions thus far? Frank, anything? Nothing here. Lovely. Cool. So let's go ahead um, and create a product. You can create a product from any of these tabs and decide where you want to save it to uh, at the end of the process. So it doesn't matter where I click this button from. So let's go ahead and click. So this is our pro new product selection. Um, we've made, for anyone that used to use us before our hub launch, the way you selected products was a drop down and then a list of products would appear. Now you're actually able to see the products that we offer and see if they're, it's something that you're interested in adding into your collection. Um, if you haven't created a product before and are interested in creating a new one but are, want to learn a little bit more, instead of having to switch tabs and go into our product catalog, you can briefly grab all the information you need from this little nifty tray. Um, once you know the product you're interested in creating, you can just go ahead and click get started. I don't know about you guys, I hate typing in t-shirt. That's like one of my biggest pet peeves. So our new search bar has, doesn't require you to do that. Nice. <laughs> Probably not as many people care about it as I do, but I just wanted to share that one. Um, so for this, we're gonna create a t-shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and click get started. Um, you can view all of the different models that we have with this little carousel um, and then select the different options. So I want mine shipped from the US. I'm gonna create a unisex t-shirt. We'll go with this Bella Canvas for the American Apparel and select the 3000 one. Um, currently, you can only create one model for your product at a time. So I can't select these two at the same time. So I'm just gonna select this one and continue. Questions? before we get into our ski selection process. All right, we have one question. When do we see the mock-ups? Um, are we talking about the mock-ups with your image on it, or are you talking about this mock-up right here? here? We can get back to that one um, if you wanna answer by text. All right, we'll come back to that. Cool. So if you're talking about your mock-ups with your image on it, it'll be on the preview page over here. We still have to select SKUs and upload your image to it, uh, and then you'll be able to see those mockups. If you're talking about just the mockup of like the t-shirt model that we selected, that's this one right here. Um, if that doesn't answer the question, type in another one and I'll be able to answer it right after. So for this example, I'm gonna create a center front, center back t-shirt. I'm gonna go with blues and grays, kind of describing what the weather is in New York today. I think it's a little chilly too. Uh, we'll go with underbase. For those of you who don't know what underbase is, underbase is a white print layer that you put on colored shirts in order to have your colors pop. If you're designing something with a white, like words or white graphic or color or anything white, you need underbase on a colored shirt. Um, fun little fact. And then I'm gonna select to create small, medium, and large shirts. You can select all the colors if you're interested in creating every single color that we offer. You can select all the sizes if you're interested in. Um, if you're a Shopify user, Shopify doesn't allow more than 100 variants within the product, so just keep that in mind. If you're saving this to storage, um, it's a free for all. So right now I've created 12 SKUs based on the different option values that I've selected. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click continue and I'm brought to our design page. Um, the right-hand side of the design page has all the SKUs that you've just created by selecting the different options um, on the previous page. So within our SKUs, you're able to see the color and the print area. Um, you can click on each one and you can see the specific color and mock-up for that one. We've got two different ways where you can upload images. You can upload individually for the specific SKU by clicking this upload image, or if you're interested in doing a bulk upload, you would select the upload image underneath the large image on the left-hand side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. Choose from my images. 
Images are the images you've previously uploaded. If you don't have any, then you won't get that option. You'll be able to upload from device or URL. So on the front, I want sloppy. If I, I can upload, since I created 12 SKUs, I can upload between one and 12 different images to be applied to them all. So if I want the same image to be applied to every single front of my, all my SKUs, I just like one image. If I want half of them to have sloppy uh, and the other half to have this wonderful design, um, I can select these two and then select the SKUs. Here, I'll just show you as we go along. And you can select them this way. Um, but I'm gonna cancel and not do it that way. And just select sloppy to be on all of them. Uh, also, we are internally having a debate right now as to if our sloth should be called sloppy or Rito. I vote Rito. Rito is short for burrito, and who doesn't like a burrito? If you guys have any opinions, feel free to comment them. It'll be taken into consideration as we try to figure his name out, his, her name out. It's a big decision. It is a big decision. There's been a lot of back and forth on that. Frank says there's been a lot of back and forth on that. We, so, have, uh, we do have another question. Cool. Um, how do I upload both, both sides of the shirt? Cool. So we'll get to that in one second. So this applies to the uh, side that you're on. If you're interested in applying to both sides of the shirt at the same time, you would select the upload on the right hand side for the specific SKU. Um, you'd select the two images that you're interested in having for this specific example, we have uh, center front, center back. If it was a calendar, you'd be able to select the 12 or 13, 14 um, images that you need. So uh, click select, this image is low resolution. You're more than welcome to ignore that warning if you want. If you don't want, you just exit out. You can click upload more and upload a different one. Oops. Now they're both within the correct resolution. And I'm brought to this page, this area where I can select the arrangement of it. So I've got front and back. If I want Rito on the front, I just click these two and it swaps it. And the same would happen for photo books, same thing with Ottomans. Anything that has multiple spaces, you'll be able to see all the space names written, like written out, um, and you'll be able to swap the positions. If you only select one image for this, but you've got multiple spaces, that one image will be applied to all of your spaces. So right now, like if I had just selected the sloth image, it would have been on the front and back of the um, product. I hope that answers the question. So I'm gonna go ahead click done, so now I have front and back. Um, one thing to note that that one is SKU specific, so if I go ahead and click on this SKU, this back is empty. So in order to do a back upload, I'm going to, I'll show you, I'm on the back, that means I'm on the back for all of them. I'm gonna do the bulk upload, select for my image, select this image, because I want them to all be consistent. Um, and now all of them have this image on it. If at any point I just decide I want this specific uh, t-shirt to have a totally different image for some reason, which is 100% okay, I have this little thing at the top. I can go ahead, look through my different images, select different ones to apply. I'm not gonna do it, that's a little, actually I can do a little rest to see what happens. If you upload a low resolution image, you'll get this little warning and it'll tell you what the DPI is. You're more than welcome to zoom out. Yeah, zoom out until you hit the correct DPI for that product or replace the image itself. Um, any edits that you do for on the SKU doesn't currently apply to any of the other ones. So if you're interested in having them all be the same, you kind of have to go through each individual SKU to make sure it's correct. Well, I just want to make this. We have time for a question. We do have time for a question. How many SKUs max do you connect at one time? Uh, should be 99. Ooh. All right. Awesome. Yeah. If you're connecting 99 SKUs to one product at a time, the loading time will take a little longer uh, just because we're then sending 99 different images to your Shopify store. It does take a couple of minutes. Our loading time is something that we do have some developers currently working on. Um, we do know it's not the best thing, but your products do save and your images are sent over. So bear with us as we fix that issue. Um, cool, other questions? Anything, Frank? 
Um, we have another one. Will you add a text editor? Eventually, yes. Right now, our sole focus is fixing any user experience issues or any bug issues within the hub. Um, ask me again in a couple of weeks, and I'll have a better answer for you. But that is something that we have been looking into. Cool. Yeah. So to briefly go through what our editor currently does, we have a zoom in, zoom out. It tells you what the DPI is and the percentage that you've zoomed into your photo or zoomed out of your photo. Um, we have a crop, which allows you to crop what the like image is or the print area or the part of the image you want printed. Um, we have a center button that would center your image to the center of the print area. The dotted line is your print area. Um, if there is a product that has bleed, if you click on the print area button up here, they, there'd be like a red outline um, showing you what the bleed area is. Another question just okay. coming in. Do you see the recommended file size somewhere? Um, so we have the printable areas written up the top right here that gives you like the spec, spec size for it. Um, each of ours, our different SKUs have different spec sizes depending on like the print area that we have for it. Uh, you should have a, an Excel doc currently is where it's all written. If you don't have it, we can send it in the email. Actually, let's just send it in the email um, after this. Okay. I'm looking at Frank if you guys can't tell. He's sitting right <laughs> next to me. I'm not sure if you can see him in this. <laughs> Try to talk to yourself. <laughs> I do talk to myself very often. Um, is there a limit for how large of a file that you can upload? Um, there is. I don't remember the specific size. We can send that out in the email as well. That is a great question. Cool. So I can move him around if any part of the image is outside this print area, so like outside the dotted line, it won't be printed. So like right now, my shirt would be printed with this sloppy Rito little man or girl, whatever you want to call the sloth. Um, it'll only be printed like that. I, for some reason, don't want to just print his face. So I'm just going to do this and call it a day. We have a rotate, which would rotate it 90 degrees. Um, if you rotate it by up here, it rotates by less than one degree. So if you want things like super precise, you can have fun <laughs> rotating him like this. Um, if you mess up and can't get it back exactly where you want it to go, you just click undo and it'll undo everything. If you want to go back, redo. Um, yeah. Like I said, you have to do it for each individual image, sadly. So someone asked, t-shirts do not have a bleed area. What about other products? Is the bleed area visible or shown? Uh, so the bleed area would be shown only once you select the print area button up top. It doesn't show up on the product preview, but the print area would have it. Um, so things like canvases, I believe, have a bleed. That'll be there. And throw pillows for sure. Cool. So now that I've finished making my edits, before I move on, actually, are there any more questions on our editor currently? Um, not on the editor, but we do have a question. If someone clicks on a product and sees where vendors of the product are located, can they see where vendors of the product are located? Um, not within this flow. So you can't see where it's located within the flow, but you, some of them, we have like a ship to option as you're selecting SKUs, and it'll say where it's shipping to, and if it ships to worldwide always, it'll say where it's shipping from. So you can make the decision of where, what region it ships from in that way. Um, but that's the only place that you can kind of see it within this specific flow. And if I can put in one more question, we have one from Patty. If, what about mugs that require two images? I don't believe we have any mugs that require two images. We've got two different types of images for mugs. We have like that stretched out that would go around the entire mug and then we have like a square, which would I believe just goes in the center of the mug. Are you getting your mug out to show me? Oh no. <laughs> he just reached for his mug and I was like, oh cool, Frank. Just going to reach his coffee. Um, so yeah, we don't have any products currently that require two images within one space. Great, yeah. Patty said she's talking about the full image that prints the image on both sides. 
Yeah, so that would just be one image and you'd be able to apply it. Like if you want space, so actually, Frank, can you show me, give me that mug? This mug? Yeah. So can you guys see the mug? I can't see my own oh. face. Is it in the screen, anyone? Yeah. Okay, cool. So this, our full image wrap goes around this whole area. So you would just create one large image and you'd be able to and space it out. If you want only like prints on one side and the other side, you would just leave the center part of it blank. Um, and it gives the illusion of having two images printed on the same mug. Um, any other questions on the editor, we can either address at the end of this or um, through our email. And then all the questions that we answered, we can type those out also um, and send them in the email as well. So now that I have finished making all my edits, I love how my t-shirt looks. I love the sloth on one side and this pattern on the other side. Um, I'm gonna go and preview it. Here I see all my product previews. I can flip through the carousel this way and it's got all of them. Again, you can flip to the back of each if you're interested. Also, if you know the SKU, you can jump to that specific SKU using this. Changes on this page are all optional. Um, this is if you're interested in changing the background of your product preview. You can change it to be blue, black, whatever you want it to be. You can paste in your own hex color code if you've got a different colored background under um, your like, store or theme. So I'm gonna go and leave it at white. If you click apply to all SKUs, you have the same image, the same background color that's applied to all images. Otherwise, it's only applied to the specific one that you're on. Product preview size is the size of the image that we send into Shopify. Shopify and, uh, well, we recommend sending it at 1024 by 1024, but if you've got your images saved at a different size on your store and you want them all to be the same, or if you're using this for like an Etsy shop and you're saving storage, uh, you can change it to be anything that you're interested in. Again, if you want it to be applied to all of your images, any changes, make sure you just select the apply to all. If you don't want to select anything here, you don't have to. You can just continue on straight to the next page. Um, so here I can change the name to be anything that I want. Slot t-shirt. Make it a little bit more creative than usual. I can add a product description if I'm interested in. I don't have to. And like I said, down here is where you can decide where you want to save it to. You can save it to your store, you can save it to storage, you can do both one. Um, you gotta save it somewhere. Otherwise, all the work, the work that you just did kind of gets lost. Before going through, are there any, Frank, have we received any questions? Uh, yes, can you add your own background color so it matches your theme? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, your background color, it, every color has like a hex value, so if you wanna go ahead, copy, like copy whatever it is and just paste it in here and click apply to all, it'll go, it'll create your own color. So um, Chrome has these really cool extensions where I can just like pick a color from page. You guys can see this, right? If I can, uh, that didn't work out as well. That's the, that's not us. That was this, this Chrome extension. Um, but you can pick a color from a page or see colors that you already picked. That way you can, if you don't know the value, uh, of the color that you currently have, you can grab it that way and then just paste it in. Will it save if you go back or cancel? Um, all the work beforehand, so if I go back here, this is all saved. Um, things that I do on this page or the uh, publish page are not saved. So any SKU selection choices that you've made, any product selection choices, any image edits, those are all saved between pages but um, anything from background color from our preview page forward is not saved. Okay. Cool? Yep, we're good. Great. Um, right. So, oh, I lied. It's saved here too. It's a nice little surprise that we all just learned. Um, so I'm gonna only save it to our candy corn. What's it called? Or candy corn store. These are the product options that you have. These are the, this is specific to people who are saving to a store and they're going to be saving to Shopify. Once you select your store name, 
you get new sections that pop up. Product options are the options that you're giving your customer to select from. If you want, and you can change them. So I want color, I can add another option and go with size. Um, if I only want one, I can delete it. If you don't want any, you can delete both of them. You can't have more than three options, that's just a Shopify rule. Um, product type, collections, tags, you can add all of those in here as well. Um, edit the prices of your specific SKU, so you can go ahead, edit each individual one, decide what you want your profit to be for each one, and it'll change your customer price here. Um, to save some time, I'm gonna leave these all at zero. I am aware of uh, a lot of people asking for us to be able to change it just here and it all apply to all of them. That is something that we are looking into doing. But like I said previously, right now we're just focused on fixing um, any experience or like loading bug, any related issues to the hub first. That's on our top priority list to do right after though. Um, advanced settings shows our, the SKU name. So this one is the Guten SKU and this is the SKU that we're giving as like your Shopify SKU. You're more than welcome to change it to be anything that you want. If you don't want to, you never have to click into this area. Um, if you're saving this to storage, you don't have to do any of that stuff. So all those sections don't show up. The only thing that shows up is the advanced setting, which has your SKU naming in as well. That way you can uh, decide what you want your personal SKUs to be if you have a like naming convention. Questions? All right, let's see, we got a question here. Can you save a product in multiple stores at the same time? Yes, you can. Um, so I don't have another store connected to this, but if I did, it would just show up as like another um, little box, checkbox here. I can select like three, four different stores. If I want different names for all of them, what would happen is in my advanced settings, it would have like your store name, your second store name, your third store name, and all of these options, you'd be able to change for each individual store. So if you want the name for your first store to be different than the name of the product for the second store, and you want the pricing to be different because you just want to like test out different pricing names, everything on the same product to see which one maybe sells better, you have every right and ability to do that. Will prices be the same in all stores? They can be if you leave this, the top section open. If you want the prices to be different, you would just have to go into the advanced settings for that under that store name and change it. Um, if you don't want to change it, we just apply the prices that you set the first time. Okay, all right, great. Um, another question, if you save a product in storage, can you publish it to a store later on or do you have to create it from the start? So right now you would have to create it from the start, um, but that is also on our, a list of things we want to get to very soon um, once we have made all this perfect. <sighs> Great, and can it save to one and then later to the second one? Um, not currently. When we build in the ability to be able to save it to storage and then publish it, we'll also build in the ability to save it to one store and then publish it to a second one. But currently, if you go into your edit mode, it only ed edits it to the, pro to the places that you saved. Great, we're good. Cool. Um, that's about it. You can have a description if you want. You don't have to. You're done, you press save. Um, so you're saving it to the store. Right For me specifically, I just saved it to the store. If I want it published, I leave this on. If I don't want it published and I want it saved as a draft to my store, I have the toggle. Um, so I'm going to publish it. Publish it means people are able to purchase it as soon as I publish it and it's live in my store, as long as my store is open to the public. If your store is not open to the public, they can't obviously order it. But as soon as you make your store public, it works. All right. All right. Great. We have some discussion about the sloth again going on. In nice. <laughs> Are we a uh, Slothy or Rito fans? Uh, we have Garth has been thrown into the argument, which that's a good that's a good one. I like that. I stopped sharing my screen before uh, my product was created successfully, but I just got that pop up that says your product has been created successfully with that like, what are those things called? I don't even know what they're called. All right, we have another question. Let me see if I can share my screen. 
Should I not see if you know this one? How do I pay for the products when the order comes in from Shopify? Also, how do I place orders manually or is it automatic? Um, so if you have your products connected to us through Shopify, as soon as, as long as Guten is the fulfillment provider, um, products, once it's ordered, they're placed, they're like automatically fulfilled. So you don't have to place an order manually. Um, you can place an order manually if you don't have Guten as your product fulfillment provider through Shopify, or if you are like an Etsy or Amazon store partner, because we don't currently integrate with those. And what was the second part of the question? Um, well, or first man, part? If manual, can you demonstrate? Um, do you guys want to have a second webinar on how to do? Actually, let me figure out how to, the screen share part of this kind of just disappeared. Oh, nope, I lied, it's at the bottom. All right, do you guys see my screen? Cool. I'll go through this fairly quickly. Oh, this is the little thing that I was talking about. What is this called? The success. What is this little, this part, the like horn part? Notification. No, the horn. This thing? Yeah. Oh. Like um, a party horn? Party horn. <laughs> That's. <laughs> so if you're looking to place an order manually, you would go into place an order over here, or uh, you can click add order and select simple order form here, and it'll bring you to the same exact place. Um, so I'm gonna quickly, quickly run through this. Um, you select the country that you're interested in ordering it from. This is also how you can order a sample of a product that you're interested in ordering. Um, if you have previously ordered items, you would go here and you'd be able to order them. Um, print burning products are the products you've created and saved to storage, so they all exist here. You can search for the product name or the specific SKU and it'll all show up. Or you just can create a new order um, select the product, let's say like acrylic block. Select the specific size and thickness that you're interested in creating and you're brought to um, the place where you can add your image. In order for an order to go through, you've got, you gotta make sure that you have your credit card on file already. That can be done through your settings tab over here and going into um, Billy. So I'm gonna stop this place order here because the next page is just adding an order and you're going through your like cart and checkout process. Um, you can obviously add more items into your order as, if you want, but I believe it has to be all shipped to the same location within a specific order at a time. So I'm gonna exit without saving, and I'm back in my hub with my sloth, Rito, what was the other one? Garth. Garth. Garth, Garth It kind of looks like Garth. <laughs> um, cool, other questions? All right, we have Comments? one more question. Yeah. Can you add variants to an existing product in your Shopify and how? Um, so you can do it through your Shopify backend. You can't currently do that in Guten. So the way that would be done and connected to Guten is like, let's say I created, um, oh, this is actually a good product. This has uh, eight out of 12 SKUs. So I would have to go into my, not a good product. Let me start that part over. See, this is my awkwardness that I hope you're all embracing or laughing at, whichever one. Um, so if I'm interested in adding like a blue to this red t-shirt, let's say I only have like red and gray and I'm interested in adding blue, I would have to go into my Shopify backend, click on this specific product, add variants. Um, so I'm not gonna log in, actually. Yeah, I'm not gonna log into my Shopify backend right now, but if you click in the specific product and you scroll down, it's got like all your variants listed underneath. You would just click, there's a button at the top of that little section that says add variant. You'd be able to create it that way. You, once you save that, you would go into the Shopify store that you're in, click link product. It would show up here. So previously I mentioned that red shirt. Um, it would tell me how many products I have connected out of them. So like here I have seven out of 29 variants connected to this product. I'd be able to select the product, click connect, type in t-shirt. Um, once they all load, it would show, yep, like this. This is what the process used to look like. The way you, we link it currently is still like this, um, but it's only for linking, and then you're brought into like the next part. So. It says the SKU that you have here. These are the current ones. 
I'm just going to select random ones and skip the rest uh, just so we can quickly move on. It tells you how many you've got left also or how many you've connected. And it brings you to our new design layout and the rest of the flow follows the same as the create new part. I'm not going to continue on with this process. I think uh, the rest of it is literally the same as the create new. All right, we're good. Cool. Well, thank you all for joining our first webinar. Um, thanks for listening to me ramble. Um, I think that's, that's uh, all we've got. Frank, do you have any last words? Camera's on you. Oh, great, thank you, Joanna, great job. And we're gonna do this again soon. Uh, I expect uh, an email about the next one to come. So if you didn't get a chance to uh, have your um, question answered, or if you find you have some more questions in the future, uh, we'll be doing this again. And also feel free to email us anytime, partner support at guten.com. Uh, we have a great support team and uh, yeah. Please reach out. We would love to help you guys out. Um, we're also looking for feedback on the hub, uh, parts that work well versus don't work well. If you have feedback, please feel free to send that with the subject line being feedback and it'll be forwarded to me. Also, if anyone's located anywhere in the New York City area, our design director, Krista, will be speaking at a Shopify event next week in Williamsburg. Um, I don't remember any of the other details, Frank, do you? <laughs> it's a Shopify meetup. Krista is our design, design director. Um, and the theme of the event will be uh, about Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, marketing strategies and tips to hopefully uh, get you to optimize your cool. sales this holiday season. Uh, it's gonna be great. So yeah, if you're in the New York City area, we'll be in Williamsburg. Uh, Tuesday, next Tuesday. So if you want any details of that, just email me, frank at guten.com. We would love to see you there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Free pizza and maybe wine. Pizza is always great. So it's going wine. To be, yeah. So Ooh, everyone attend for the wine. <laughs> all right. Thank you all once again for attending. Um, hopefully we answered some questions. And like I said earlier, by the beginning of next week, we'll be sending out an email with the swept recorded webinar and all the answers. Uh, all the questions answered. I hope this wasn't too bad, too painful for all of you. So thank you and have a great rest of your day. Bye all.